Teachers, when did karmic justice finally come to that one troublesome student? Story 1. I was teaching music. I had a flautist who was fantastic. He practiced four hours every day and wanted to be the next James Galway, guy who does the Flutie Shire theme in The Lord of the Rings. Unfortunately, he had an ego the size of Texas. He told the girl next to him, who also wanted to be a professional flautist, that she was abysmal and she should just go kill herself. He refused to audition for our local honor band, which was part of his grade, because he refused to lower himself to playing with such talentless musicians. He would be about my conducting in class when I wouldn't cue him because I was too busy cueing the low brass who needed help with their entrances, aka teaching. He refused to play a theme from a popular video game at a concert, something that we play to get people to attend because we need that money to keep the program going. It was apparently not artistic enough. Then he refused to show up to a concert because he was embarrassed to be seen performing with his high school band. So he failed band, and I kicked that toxic little crap out. But he was talented, and he wanted to be a flautist, so he auditioned for Juilliard and made it in. This sucker quits before the first semester is over because he believed he was more talented than his teachers. He earned a symphony gig in a very well-known group thanks to a blind audition where he wasn't permitted to talk and reveal how much of a D-bag he was. That lasted two weeks before he dissed the very famous conductors conducting and got his butt fired. His career is dead because he couldn't keep his ego in check, and I find it immensely satisfying. Dang, he just flew straight into the sun. What did I tell you folks? Genius is one thing, but if you want to really achieve your potential, a little humility can be awfully helpful. I'm sure there are exceptions, but if you're banking on being one of those exceptions, then you might end up being an out-of-work flautist. Story 2. College instructor here was teaching English 102. Smart butt kid was on a sport team as a student manager, and this was his life. He lived to pick up jock straps and clean lockers and all that. Well, anyway, that's fine, and I was happy for him. He sat in the front row and was always, always talking about stuff that happened with the team, or he was fiddling on his phone and iPod. Sometimes he was doing all those things. He was really scattered. At this point, I wasn't really angry with him, just concerned. He was way too cool to actually do work when I gave the class time to work on their papers, and he decided he didn't need the book. I told him many times he needed to buckle down and get going. He didn't. For over half the semester, he would just get up and leave class 15 minutes in if he decided he didn't want to stay. He would make any class discussion heck for everyone else because he couldn't for some reason follow the thread of the conversation and would ask inane questions. He was also pretty sexist and was always talking about various ways he cheated in classes or helped other people cheat. He was so incredibly friendly, though. I told him many times he shouldn't discuss these kinds of things in front of a teacher. So finally, I am telling the class that the last day to drop is tomorrow and blah blah blah. He comes up to me after class and asks if he should drop. I look at his grade, which is an abomination, and tell him, yes, I think the best course of action would be for him to drop. Well, he stopped coming to class, but he never dropped. I gave him an F. He sent me an email with a frowny face with lots of parentheses. Yeah, that's the thing. College is both a lot harder and more demanding than high school, but some students also don't understand that the teachers slash professors typically won't hound you like high school teachers. They look at you like adults, and if you're going to screw yourself over, they'll just watch the train wreck and hope you learn your lesson. A lesson that costs you a lot of money. Story 3. In high school, we had this little crap kid named Brandon. I only had one class with him, but that class is where the story happened. It was 11th grade geography, and our teacher was one of the nicer teachers I can remember. Brandon would always try to push her buttons, like I'm sure he did to everyone. He would never take it too far. I think he just loved the attention of getting the whole class to look at him or laugh at what he was doing. He would make little noises, tell stupid jokes during lecture, pretend to sleep and snore, and any other stupid, irritating crap that you could think of. Our teacher, she was quite a patient lady, but you could tell by mid-year that she had enough of his crap as anyone. She couldn't even really punish him because Brandon loved that kind of attention and it made him all the happier. The few times he got too much, she would give him detention and a couple times sent him to the office, which just made him more giddy. We had a very tame office staff and they would keep him in the office for an hour or something and just let him out. 
She tried everything, and you could tell she was at the end of her wits. A few weeks after 9-11, some kids thought it would be funny to call in a bomb threat. They cleared the school and went locker by locker. They found nothing, of course, and went back in. As soon as we sat down in that geography class, an office staff member came out into our class and went up to the teacher and whispered something into her ear. I can still remember the calm look on her face. In the most professional way, she looked over at Brandon and said, You're being called to the office. She went on with the rest of the class completely normal. They had found quite a bit of weed in Brandon's locker, and as a result, he was expelled over it. She slipped the weed in his locker. What a bad butt. Hmm. See, your story, not too fantastical. Seems pretty plausible, and frankly, I don't see any reason to doubt it. <clears throat> oh, uh, one more thing. You mentioned how Brandon was really starting to wear on your teacher by mid-year, and yet the bomb threat and Brandon's expulsion took place just a few weeks after 9-11. September 11th is the beginning of the year, is it not? Hm. Story 4. Too long didn't read, super lazy apathetic kid gets an F in my class and that's not the worst of his problems. I once taught a grade 11 history class where I had one kid who caused me a lot of grief. He was frequently late, walking in 20 to 30 minutes late, class was during C slot, he had a spare during B, and would actually take the bus home after his A class and simply stay home for an hour, or just not show up at all. Additionally, he was super passive aggressive, rarely handed anything in, and obsessed himself with spending time on his super expensive smartwatch and or phone, which is also somewhat more of a big deal as my school is in a low middle income area and more than half the students can't even afford a simple phone. Anyway, I'd pretty much had it with him. A major project comes up halfway through and he doesn't bother to do any of the group work. I weight projects 50-50 personal input versus group mark and then didn't show up for the entire week of presentations. I'd had lots of conversations with mom at this point, who luckily had my back and was totally fed up with him too. Suffice to say, I gave him the only zero in the class. So of course he hasn't learned and his grades are below failing marks. Test on the last unit before the exam is coming up, and I give the students the option to write a unit test and replace their lowest test grade with it. Obviously every kid takes the chance. He saunters in late, and when I ask if he's going to do the op test, he just said, nope, sat down and played on his phone. I was a bit dumbfounded. Whatever. Holy cow. That justice boner, though. And I'm a girl. Story 5. Not a teacher, but one time when I was in kindergarten, a kid looked me straight in the eye, bit himself on the wrist hard, and ran to the teacher and blamed me. That little C. They sent me to the principal's office. My mom was called down. I got yelled at and cried. A week later, the kid did it again, and the teacher saw him do it. Felt so good to have the principal apologizing profusely to me while that little craphead got a mouthful from his parents. My brother used to do this to me to get me in trouble. I knew I was going to get in trouble and couldn't prove it wasn't me, so I did it. A lot harder than he did it to himself. He quit. <laughs> I was literally about to suggest, if you're going to have to pay for it anyway, you might as well get what you paid for. Story 6. I have a ton of stories, but this is the only one that made me laugh because I am a horrible person. I had a fifth grader who looked like a white version of Cleveland Brown Jr., right down to the hanging cheeks and no neck. This kid was a know-it-all menace. He'd interrupt me, do that weird Rihanna hand twirl, and say, well, actually, Ms., and then state some random fact that was often wrong or irrelevant. Well, eventually, while on lunch duty, I see that his lunch every day is a can of soda, a bag of chips, and a ton of candy. Like, the bag is busting at the seams. I alert the principal because I'm worried that his grandmother, who was raising him, wasn't feeding him properly. Principal calls the grandma, and grandma gets angry. She was letting him pack his own lunch and wasn't checking it. So she's embarrassed that we've called her on it. She tells us that she will only pack healthy food now. She then tells us that the kid's doctor said he needs a serious diet. She tells us that he cannot have any candy. Cut to a week later, the kid is still being a little crap and pees off another student. Student runs to the principal and says that the kid has been sneaking candy to school every day. The principal goes to talk to him, the kid shoves a chocolate bar into his mouth, and the principal takes away the blow pop sucker he has. The kid proceeds to roll around on his belly across the entire hallway, screeching and crying so hard that he's choking on the half-chewed chocolate bar. Chocolate, spittle, and tears everywhere. 
A kindergarten student walks by and says, You look like a baby. The kid stops wallowing long enough to punch the little student. He got suspended for violence, and I got a peaceful classroom. I feel like you've hit some type of rock bottom if a person who was an actual baby less than four years ago calls you a baby. I feel like a lot of these stories might be about fifth graders. I used to help teach fifth grade kids at church back before I became a heathen, and I've never known more know-it-all a-holes in my life. And they were almost always wrong. It's like they've hit an age where they realize they know some stuff, but it goes to their heads as they have no idea just how much they don't know. Story 7. I taught a comparative anatomy animal dissection lab section back in college. I had one kid in a section, let's call him Kevin, who never listened to dissection instruction and just dove in with a scalpel, dicing and chopping and generally mutilating most of the internal organs. His first karmic warning came when we were dissecting squid and he got squid juice on himself. Smelled awful for the rest of that class. However, he kept on ignoring instructions and hacking away. And this time, karmic justice struck on our very last dissection project, the fetal pig. Kevin really wanted to see the pig's brain. Kevin couldn't get through the skull, so he started whacking away at it with the butt of a flat pry knife. I told him to stop, but he had to give it one last mighty thwack. Crack! The skull breaks, and rubbery piglet brain bits come flying out everywhere, mostly over Kevin, splattering him. Unfortunately, while protesting my refusal to let him dice this piglet into pancetta cubes, Kevin had his mouth open. Thankfully, preserved pig brain and jested orally seems to have a calming, subduing effect on Kevin for the last couple classes. Too long didn't read, don't jerk into dissections unless you're willing to swallow. Let's call him Kevin. There can only be one. Story 8. Not a teacher, but I'll tell you a story anyway. There was this guy in middle school that would take shoots and pee in the hallway really weird, but he somehow thought it was funny, so he kept doing it. Well, I was locker buddies with this really early developed guy in middle school. He was like Hagrid Big to me back then. I noticed the weird kid standing next to my locker, but standing in front of Hagrid's locker. I'm thinking, oh crap, something is about to go down, so I waited. Hagrid gets to his locker and this kid was standing in front of his locker. Hagrid tells him to please move out of the way because he was blocking the way. Weird kid says no and starts chuckling. All I'm thinking is, oh crap, oh crap. Hagrid asks again and still the same response. This is when Hagrid freaking kicks this mother effer in the face. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. The kid is standing straight up and he lifted his leg higher than I am in height and kicked this kid in the face. Hagrid gets suspended and tells me if that kid ever bothers me to let him know so he can kick him in the face again. You're in the way, Harry. I'm what? Slam! Last year, I had a seven-year-old in my class who was just a pain. He's the only child I've ever taught who I've actually disliked. He would throw things around the classroom, pinch other children, stab them with pencils. He was rude to everyone, and he would always blame it on someone else. Talking that his parents wouldn't help because they believed everything he said, even over adults who had actually witnessed him doing it. They would give excuses and say that other children were blaming him or that he was being picked on. There was nothing wrong with this child other than he had been brought up with no sequences in his life. Anyway, one break time when he was harassing another child, and I guess they just had enough, and this usually mild-mannered child just punched him in the stomach, causing the horrible child to wet himself. When following the incident up, all of the other children who witnessed it, about five or six, completely closed ranks and denied that it ever happened. I can't usually condone when children hit back, it causes so many other problems. But you better believe all the adults that have had to deal with this child were rooting for the hitter. Yeah, violence is not something I am prone to condone, but I am also aware that if you act like a D enough, eventually you might get what's coming to you. Doesn't make the violence right, per se, but you can hardly blame the kid for punching him. Story 10. Mine is a shorter one. There was a clique of popular kids who were often jerks and acted out because, hey, that's funny in high school. Our city had a living center for the mentally ill that also had a public swimming pool, and when we got to the swimming module in gym, that was where we headed. 
Well, one day there's an extremely autistic 14-year-old boy at the pool, like barely functioning. And Chuckle F decides that it'll be funny to sit there and growl at him aggressively like a hostile dog, because why the frick not? Autistic kid loses his crap, he freaks right out. The kid's handler figures out what happens because someone discreetly tells her when she's wondering why her ward is losing his goddamn mind, and goes and talks to the teacher about it. The cool guy is banned from the center. He automatically fails the module. They chose to take it a step further, however, and decide that he instantly fails the gym course, losing the credits he needed to graduate, in addition to a lengthy suspension. Haha, <laughs> Monday, some new kids were transferred into the elementary school I was working at. One was a total brat, and the only open seat for him was next to a sweet little girl with autism. He was antagonizing her all day until he made the mistake of growling at her during snack, and she just growled back and smashed his bag of goldfish into tiny pieces with her fist. Frankly, I'm glad that kid got suspended and lost the credit he needed to graduate. I don't wish misfortune on people, but if you're that old and acting like that towards someone on the spectrum, you need to learn a pretty harsh lesson. I hope that guy got a little sense knocked into him and improved his attitude and understanding a little. Story 11. Park Ranger here. We do this urban education initiative with some Michelle Obama money to bus inner city kids out to a wetland. There was this one kid, let's call him Pablo, who was this third grade classroom's funny guy. Live animal demonstration, ask about its nipples, and then repeat the word nipple louder so everyone could laugh. While we're walking, talk about animal poop the whole time, of course, I was professional, and answered the questions because I begrudgingly know a lot about scat and nipples. Every learning opportunity for other kids he would barge into and take everybody out of the moment. Every time I got kids excited about nature, he would do some lame peer pressure so the vibe was, no, nature sucks. I want to push him into some briar pretty bad. Justice came swiftly when I was explaining poison ivy to half the group. He swaggers over and does some kind of, these leaves? Mine! prank to disrupt the focus of the group. I wanted to tell him it was poison ivy, but instead told him to put it down. And the other kids were like, drop it! The reverse psychology made him caress the leaves even more, then before he touched his face, I had to tell him what they were. Pablo then cried. His crude but cool guy persona was shattered and everybody listened to me for the rest of the field trip. Story 12. Elementary teacher here. My first year teaching was freaking terrible. Really tough school combined with my rookie class management skills made for a free-roaming terror class. By mid-year, I was at my wit's end, was trying right the ship and struggling. Field trips were the worst thing I'd ever experienced. Enter my principal. He had observed my class a few weeks before and was shocked at easily 10 of my students' behavior. Told me he knew I had a field trip coming up and he would happily stay back and watch any of my students that I didn't want to go because of their behavior. So, a few days before the trip, I told my class this. However, I waited until read aloud because that's when it was toughest. The good 12 kids in class loved read aloud, they just wanted to enjoy the book. The other 10 to 14 would constantly goof around and not listen to a word. So, I casually mentioned in the middle of Read Aloud that some students would be staying back from our fabulous field trip in a few days with the principal. I told them it was all behavior-based. Of course, the good kids heard me, the little shoots didn't. The next two days, the little shoots continue being little shoots. The morning of the field trip, about two hours before the trip, I remind the class of the principal's visit. The little shoots become little angels. Field trip comes and in walks my principal. I calmly read off the list of 13 names staying while the rest of the class comes with me. I had left the most boring worksheets possible for the kids staying behind, and as we walked out the door, all the little shoots were crying while my principal was reading them the riot act. The remainder of my class and I had a lovely trip, enjoyed a great play, they glimpsed what school should be like, and I got the glimpse of what teaching could be. When we got back, it looked like the little shoots had never stopped crying. Best day of the year. Good on you. I mean, it sucks, right? You don't want to have to punish students and have them miss out on opportunities, but sometimes, especially in grade school, it can be good to have somewhat harsh lessons like this. I feel like it can really stick with kids to realize, hey, acting like a jerk has consequences. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day.
Story 13. Had a kid that threw a lock at my head not get expelled because it just slipped out of her hand. She got expelled a few months later for bringing a weapon to school. Story 14. Have another one. We had these two kids, a brother and sister combo with fabulous names. Let's call them Princess and Major. Actually, not bad kids, just a little lazy, but the parents were the laziest fricks. Did anything to not work, just sit around and exist. I'm surprised they had the motivation to get off their butts and procreate. Twice. Anyway, there was always some excuse why homework wasn't done, and this was fourth grade, inner city, so homework was crap like reading and little booklets to your folks, or practicing multiplication facts. The kids also missed school all the time. The kids were honest. Mommy didn't want to wake up and get us ready for the bus. Daddy was up late with his friends. So we report them to truancy. They turn around and find some lawyers to sue the school for the kids' underachievement. If the teachers were doing their jobs, these precious children would be pre-med students by now. Luckily, we kept really good records. The lawyer shows up, the principal, superintendent, truancy officer, and our lawyer. Their lawyer starts in, our principal breaks in, holds up his hand, asks the truancy officer, how many days have these children missed? Ends up they'd missed enough days in the last three years to equate more than a year of school. Principal says, now ma'am, sir, how are we supposed to deliver a quality education to your children if you don't get them to school? Their lawyer quietly packed up her crap and left. Not too lazy to get a lawyer. Wow. Story 15. I interred in a class with this kid who always thought he was smarter than everyone else. He was pretty smart, but not by too much. He always got paired with kids not as smart as him, so he would always be really smug when dealing with them. We learned he got that from his parents during a parent-teacher conference. His parents praised that boy up and down and thought he was the smartest kid in school. They built him up as that, and they got him thinking that too. Then they went off on my mentor teacher. She wasn't providing him with high enough education. She was bringing him down. She was terrible. The conference ended when my mentor teacher left the room crying after the verbal lashing. Well, about a week later, there was an event where parents came to watch their children in class. It was to watch them do math games with other students. Well, my mentor teacher paired this smug little bastard with the actual smartest kid in class the one who was working on more advanced classes after school. The kid got shamed. His parents were so flustered during the event. They were very visibly nervous and upset looking as this kid got destroyed game after game. They left before it was all done and took him out of school for the rest of the day. Delicious. Being smart is great, and you definitely want to do what you can to help a kid achieve their potential. And you know what can be extremely helpful to achieving potential? A little bit of humility. Story 16. I coached middle school football. Some kids have come out of their shell by then, others have not, but at least most of the early bloomers were jerks to make life heck for everybody. The team's starting halfback was one of those jerks. He gave a defensive lineman heck, and since everybody thought he was cool, they gave him heck right along with him. The defensive lineman was a big guy, but not aggressive or outgoing, still just in his shell really. He did find out there because he was a big guy but hardly played to his potential. The little running backs took their Napoleon complexes out on the big guy by running by him and shouting, Pee! every time he failed to stop them. Rather than fight back to make the play, he would just ignore it and line up and try again the next play. One day, the whole thing just clicked for the big guy and he started making plays. He learned to get off his blockers and form tackle and attack the ball carrier. It was a cool thing to see. He loved it. When he really started getting into a groove, I started running the jerk halfback right at the blooming defensive lineman and watched him plant that guy on the ground with a thud every time. It was just getting easier as I made sure they ran the same play at him, play after play. Soon, bruised and beaten, the jerk halfback asked, how many times are you going to run this play? And I responded, once for every time you called him a pee. I totally played this in my head like a scene from Little Giants, Disney Gold, baby. Except for the pee part. We're going to have to change that to sissy or something. Story 17. First grade here had a boy that would not stop hitting kids with basketballs. He'd run up and pop the ball right at students. Sometimes he'd toss it real fast and say catch, but most often he'd just throw it at children on the playground who were completely unaware. This kid seemed like he was trying to knock other children down. 
He'd laugh his butt off if he saw someone stumble or fall after they were hit by his basketball. After talking with his parents, we told them we'd be taking the balls away from him until after spring break to see if his behavior improved. As promised, he was allowed to play basketball again after break, but we warned he better behave. It didn't take even five minutes before he stalked and shot that Spalding special at this poor little girl knocking her down. She cried and pointed at him, mulch dangling from her hair. He's mean, Ms. Misty. I agreed and told her he'd have the basketballs taken away for the rest of the school year. As I got up and walked his way, he started to bolt. He ran out of the playground, past the sand pit, and onto the basketball court. He maintained eye contact with me, and before I could take another step, a stray ball from a fifth grade game hit the edge of the backboard, bounced off, and hit that little crap square in the face. He went down like a sack of potatoes. Of course, I ran over to him and made sure he was okay. He may be acting like a little crap, but he's still just a child. I called for the nurse since he was out cold. He woke up with me above him and started crying, saying he'd never do it again. Please, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I won't do it again. I'll have to wait and see this coming year if Karma kicked his butt or not, because he didn't want to pick up another basketball the rest of the school year. He may think you're a wizard that can control basketballs. Encourage this. You dare use the basketball wizard's orbs for unjust acts? Foolish boy, I shall curse you with the foulest of basketball curses. You have faked the funk and shall suffer a nasty dunk. Story 18. Freshman English. Busted a kid for plagiarism. He was furious and refused to drop the course. I gave him a second chance and he continued to plagiarize. He was a slimy, smarmy kid who thought I was just a dumb, clueless TA, but jokes on him, he ended up failing the course three ways. Plagiarizing, exceeding absences, and failing to turn in a complete final. You can argue about one way to get an F. You can't argue about three. Story 19. I teach college students to be teachers. My first year doing this, I had a student who was always late, turned in the bare minimum of work, always had excuses. I told him he had to improve because if he did this on the job, he'd get fired. He kept coasting and the other professors let him get by. First teaching job? He got fired. I laughed in the privacy of my office, and I'm not sorry. Story 20. Had a kid who was a real douche nozzle when I taught fifth. This kid, let's call him Ray, had one of those moms who refused to hold him accountable for anything. It was always some other kid did it. Ray was just protecting himself. Ray just wanted to fit in. Ray was being targeted. Also, she was one of those kids who would ask Ray if he were guilty and take his no as incontestable truth. She would say, my son doesn't lie to me. Oh, really? Your kid doesn't lie? Your kid and Jesus. All kids lie. Anyway, I had a full caseload as a special ed teacher, so I got a paraprofessional, call him Steve. Ray hated Steve. Had some kind of issue with male authority figures. One day, Ray gets in trouble coming back from recess. Steve reprimanded him verbally. By the time Ray makes it to the classroom, he's saying how Steve got in his face and shouted at him. Nope. He asked to go talk to the principal. Yay, Ray's gone for at least five minutes. Tells the principal how Steve grabbed his arm. When mom comes and gets him, now he's saying Steve pushed him. Next day, we get a phone call. Ray's mom and grandma are coming in and want a meeting with Steve and the principal to discuss how Steve choked Ray. Steve's freaking out. Other kids were there, but no adults, no cameras. How can he prove his innocence? I tell him, go to the meeting, and before anybody says anything, have Ray share what happened. Steve came back smiling. As soon as one story came out, everybody else was disagreeing. Well, Ray told me, uh, but Ray told me, I would have loved to see the mom's face as her kid is proven a liar in front of everyone. Story 21. I teach kindergarten and had a terrible, terrible child in my class last year. He liked to pull his desk away from the girl sitting across from him so her pencils and crayons would go flawing on the floor. Finally, one day, she got fed up and slammed her desk back into his. Unfortunately for him, his fingers happened to be there. I had to resist the urge to be like, that's what you get, but instead I just reminded him that that's why I said not to move his desk away from the rest of the table and sent him to the nurse. Ooh, crap, I know how bad that hurts. Good for you for not punishing the girl for dishing out some karma. 
Story 22. When I was younger, the teacher got tired of the kid who kept disrupting the class, and she gave extra homework to everyone in the class except the troublesome kid, and made all the students write, thanks for the extra homework name. Somehow he stopped believing that he was cool after that. Straight from the drill sergeant's playbook, that one. Story 23. I was in pre-K in the early 80s at a private Catholic school. This one kid, Amy, would always bite the other kids. I don't remember exactly how it went, but I guess one day I came home crying and had a really bad bite mark or something, and my mom was peed. She took me straight to the superintendent, not the principal, and showed her what happened. The superintendent, a really old man, did not put up with that crap. She called Amy into her office and bit the frick out of her arm. Amy started crying, but she never bit anyone again. Old nuns in the 80s were hardcore. Note, I am not saying what happened was right, just that it happened. There were a lot of ways that story could have gone, but I never would have guessed old man bites little girl to teach her a lesson. That was nowhere to be found on my bingo card of karmic justice. Story 24. Sister told me this story. Teacher kept a pack of Oreos behind the whiteboard, and when he would walk out of class, students would jump in and grab some and eat them before he came back. Teacher noticed, so he put really hot sauce inside the Oreos and left on purpose. Came back in, and the kids who stole the cookies were left heavily breathing and sweating. They never stole cookies again. Story 25. I'm an elementary school teacher, so this doesn't seem quite as serious as the others. Here it goes, though. There was a problem child in my class who thought it was cool to not listen to teacher advice, shrug off reprimands, and make snarky comments. He was hard to manage, but by no means a bad kid. We have a rule at our school that there's no running on the deck outside of our classroom. The official reason for this is that it's dangerous, but the rule is often ignored when no teacher is looking. One day, the entire class and myself were standing out on the deck lined up for lunch when this particular student was coming back from getting something in the front building. He decided to blatantly ignore the no running on the deck rule that he had been reminded of probably a hundred times before, and he began to sprint towards the class. Right as I yelled his name, he tripped and went flying. It was an epic wipeout that sent him sprawling across the deck, which the entire class saw. I checked if he was okay and didn't say anything about it at the time, but I was able to remind him that we do have rules for a reason. I did feel rather like justice had been served in that one delicious moment, however. Too long didn't read, Snarky Kid had an epic wipeout because he ignored the rule. Justice. Story 26. One of my favorite things about being a teacher is when a child experiences natural consequences, like tripping after they refuse to stop running, or accidentally hitting themselves when they're trying to flail around to get away from you. My favorite I have ever witnessed, though, was from a preschooler. He used to army crawl under the lunch tables and jump off the furniture. One day in the lunchroom, he got peed for some unidentified reason. He stood rooted in one spot and screamed that he was never moving. He wanted to make a point, so he stomped as viciously as he could. He was wearing really flat-footed sandals on a hard floor and must have hit the ground with a perfectly level foot. His face was like a cartoon. His mouth made an immediate upside-down U, and he screamed like that guy on SpongeBob who yells, My leg! It just felt like justice to me. I just snort laughed at this. It's so visual. It's beautiful. Story 27. This one is more sad than satisfying and more directed at the parents than the student. I'm an elementary special ed teacher at a school for children with emotional and or behavioral disorders. Every kid is troublesome by nature, but this one student was truly insane. When we got him, he was a very quiet and polite boy, and the IEP did not mention any kind of behavioral issues. We had no idea why he was being sent to us. Then, slowly, we started to see what it was. Every once in a while, he would just go crazy, laughing maniacally, cursing, insulting other students, getting out of his seat to dance or run out the room, slap his butt at the teacher, etc. Other times, he would just start uncontrollably sobbing. Then other times, he would talk to someone named Daniel, despite there being no Daniel in the school. Daniel would make him say and do these things, this student told us. The student is only nine, and the things he was saying were things I didn't hear until high school. It was obvious someone was showing this stuff to this kid, and it was also obvious that a much more serious mental disorder was present. 
We constantly talked to the parents about it, but they did nothing about it. We wanted the kid to get help, not punishment. After a year and a half of no progress, this past July comes around and summer program starts. The student doesn't show up, and we have no idea why. Turns out the student did something horrible that he was taken to some kind of mental hospital. We have no idea what, but all we know is he has been committed. I hated having to work with this kid, but I really did feel bad for him. And on his good days, he was really a sweet kid. We told the parents, but nope, couldn't be bothered. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.